Have you ever wanted vengeance? Have you ever wanted somebody to get what they deserve? Oh, I know you have. I know I have. That person that has wronged you or maybe wronged others, and it seems like they are getting away with ungodly elements that no one is keeping in check. And there's those moments where we have that thought, if no one else will do it, I will. Have you been there? I have. My name is Trent Jenkins. I'm one of our pastors here at North Coast Church. And today we're continuing in the book of Jude. I want to read these verses right here. It says this uh, in verses 8 through 10. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand, and the very things they do understand by instinct, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Here he's using this example of the archangel Michael, saying in this moment he may have had all the right to be able to go against the devil, but he said, The Lord rebuke you. I'm wondering how many times in my own human nature I decide to go after what I think is wrong and put myself before God. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, there's this incredible story where David and his men are hiding in this cave and Saul goes in, actually says he goes in to relieve himself. And there in the darkness of this cave, David goes up, encouraged by his men to do And he goes and he cuts off a corner of the king's cape, his cloak. And verse 5, just after he had done that, this is what it says. Afterward, David was conscience stricken by having cut off a corner of his robe. You see, he realized in that moment, God was saying, what are you doing? Why are you going ahead of what it is that I have planned? How many times do I go ahead of what God has already planned because somehow I think that God needs me to take care of his business? Goes on to say this, Saul ends up exiting the cave. David rebukes his men and says, no, Saul is still God's anointed and I have no right to touch him. And then he says this, may the Lord judge between you and me and may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me but my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evildoers comes evil deeds, so my hand will not touch you. There's a side where we can end up putting ourselves on the side of those who are doing evil by doing it outside the will of God, by going ahead of what his timing is. And I just want to encourage you today, some of you are in some hard situations. Some of you are in some situations where injustice is occurring. Some of you are in situations where it seems like the person is getting away with all sorts of things. Number one, it doesn't mean that you need to be a pushover. It doesn't mean that you just need to take it. I want to make that very clear, that there are some proper authorities to be able to go to, to be able to take care of the situation you're in. But it also doesn't mean that we have the right to just take vengeance in our own hands. God has you. God has your back. God is bigger than you think. He is bigger than the situation you're in. He's bigger than that man or that woman or that government or that uh, employee or that boss or that business. He's bigger than those situations. And if we follow after him, then he's leading us. And if he's leading us, then he's not going to forsake us. But if we go ahead of God, if we go before him, then we are responsible for our own actions. I would much rather follow after God than to say, hey, God, why don't you follow after me? Thanks for joining us today. I pray this is encouraging to you. Be encouraged that God has you in the palm of his hand and he wants to be there for you. Have a good day.